You might have heard about Canada's Medical Assistance in Dying program, otherwise known as MAID. It's what you've heard under other names uh, like euthanasia or assisted suicide, and that's now part of Canada's I hesitate to call it a medical system, but certainly a government program. How about that? Because there's not th nothing really medical about them killing you. <laughs> it's kind of, of the opposite, you might say. In any case, I want to talk to you about an ad that was shown on TV in Canada by a fashion company, a clothing company called Simons. They released an ad glorifying this assisted suicide by showing one of the women who was killed using the program. The woman's name is Jennifer Hatch and she was killed in October uh, 2022. So first, let's go over the ad because I think there's something deeply disturbing about showing ads on TV glorifying suicide. All right, we're going to go over it together. Dying in a hospital is not what's natural. That's not what's soft. And in these kinds of moments, you need softness. See, the most beautiful exit is one where you choose to leave different people behind. It's when you give up and when the medical system or the government system decides that it's cheaper to facilitate your death than it is to help you survive. We'll continue. Last breaths are sacred. Interesting choice of words. Yes, yes. Sacred. It's rather odd to have somebody who's glorifying in a company here that's, that's glorifying and taking advantage of this situation in a really odd way, because I don't know how suicide sells clothes. But in any case, and then trying to insert religious messages, messages of piety. I guess we're supposed to believe that something being done here is good and moral, and the entire thing is just downright evil. When I imagine my final days, I see bubbles. I see the ocean. I see music. I okay, so what he's seeing her here in a bunch of different scenes are the things that she decided to, you know, spend her last month or so doing before she ended her life. But notice that in order to do these things, she had to be alive. I'm not trying to be facetious here, but in the most literal sense, she's advocating these different things, the spending time with her family, the, the music, the bubbles, um, all of which you actually have to be alive to experience. If you choose to end your life, you're choosing to end those experiences. Choosing death does not increase the, the positive experiences that you have and the surroundings with family. This is so backwards. See cheesecake. <laughs> Even now, as I seek help to end my life, there is still so much beauty. You just have to be brave enough to see it. I'm not sure brave enough is the right choice of words. I don't think it's an honest choice of words. And there's, there it says, you know, she was ki killed in October 2022. Okay. Brave enough. What would be brave is staying around and fighting the struggle that was placed in front of her. Because I don't deny that there's a struggle, that there was a struggle for her. Of course there was. Of course it was a difficult situation. You know, there, there aren't very many people whose lives are perfect who are then essentially suicidal which is what we're talking about here. But here's the, the real backstory, because they want you to believe that there's this impossible situation that took place and, and therefore somehow reached the moral conclusion that this, this was right, this is what should have happened, that a 37-year-old woman should have been executed by the state. But she actually told CTV in June 2022, just months before, they, before she was killed, that she wanted to live. She said, and I quote, I feel like I'm falling through the cracks. So if I'm not able to access health care, am I then able to access death care? And that's what led me to look into MAID, unquote. See, Jennifer had a painful genetic condition that required, you know, real care. And what happened was 
her family doctor had moved away and at that point she had difficulty getting the care that she needed. It's not a system like in the United States where you can Google different specialists and kind of show up at them and say, you know, I'm, I'm here and I want treatment. You can't Google them and see who has the best rating and all of that. It's a very different system. Instead, the primary care doctor acts as gatekeeper to those specialists. She lost her primary care doctor. Getting a new one is a process that involves actually having an interview with the doctor. The doctor can reject you. There are long wait times. All of this is actually fairly common with these socialized systems. It's a very similar situation over there in England. But what we're talking about is a woman who had a medical condition that could have been treated, was not treated properly. She, in her words, she fell through the cracks of the medical system. And yet she didn't fall through the cracks of the death care system. And so they killed her. And she, you know, she, she signed up for that to be killed. And now she's dead. And in the aftermath of that death, the company, uh, Simons, put an ad on TV glorifying the decision that she made as brave. Now, now think of the implications here for those who, for example, struggle with depression. How we, we try and remind them in their place of darkness, that better times can be ahead, that the struggles that they experience, because many of them are tangible struggles that they experience with, with, with housing or poverty or, or medical problems, you know, depressed people have real problems too. The, when you, what we ought to do in those cases, and what we have traditionally done is try to remind people that there is a future beyond those problems and that there's a worth and value inherent to every human life. That ad does the very opposite. It immerses a person in the now, the, the current difficulty, and says, this is it, so, you know, hurry up and have a few last experiences and then just pull the plug. And I think it's a, I think it's a consequence of seeing man as something other than what he is. If, if you don't see man as a, as a being made in the image and likeness of God, if you don't see him in that sense, then he's, well, interchangeable with, with plant or animal. He doesn't have unique value that needs to be protected. And it's, it's a really dark way of seeing each other. And she was reduced to her value in the fiscal sense. You know, it was, it was essentially some government programs saying, well, how much will it cost to kill her versus to keep her, keep her going, keep her well treated? Because ultimately that's what it comes down to. If you see all the different studies that the government funded uh, about made this program medical assistance in dying, it's all about how much money will it save the government to get rid of the most vulnerable part of our population. I mean, that's, that's absolutely evil. Wait, don't leave yet. I have more videos for you to watch. One of them is recommended by YouTube because you know how well it has built a profile of you. Yeah, and the other one's my most recent video so that you haven't already seen. So you can find something that you might enjoy. Also, there are links in the description below that'll help you to support the channel if you're so willing. And really, who doesn't want one of these mugs?